Ah, oh, man. It looked pretty cold there, didn't it? But it wasn't cold here. This actually was yesterday, and yesterday's temperature went up to 86. Um, it was 82. Look at the week has been pretty nice. 80, 80, 70, 82. Fahrenheit, of course. <laughs> 77 today. Uh, it's been just beautiful outside, and a little bit more. Uh, getting closer to seasonal next week, but still pretty nice. That was all just a joke. Just a joke. So I'm pretty excited. Um, I ordered a new dehydrator uh, three days ago and I was told that it would be about 15 business days and it arrived today. So it's crazy. It's an Excalibur food dehydrator. It's the 3900T Deluxe, which means that it also came with uh, a couple books. And, um, and this is it. And uh, this isn't a video about the uh, dehydrator. I'm going to go out and show you my garden right away. But I was going to do that, and then this arrived. So um, I haven't used it, obviously. I've actually just taken it out of the box. And uh, it comes with uh, nine trays. They're uh, 15 inch by 15 inch. Slide right in. Um, there's a seven inch fan in the back and a big heater. And it's got a thermostatic control, which takes it from 105 degrees uh, Fahrenheit all the way to 165 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, it has a little thing over here to give you an idea of what the settings are. That doesn't have a timer, but what the heck, I don't really need that anyway. Compared to the little round one that I've been using for the last five years, um, this is going to be very good. And my timing, is, the timing for this is really great because uh, I've got... Uh, a harvest to do and then I'm gonna have a whole bunch of peppers to be dehydrating and with this because the fan is in the back there blowing across um, I won't be having to move the trays around which is something that I've grown used to it's like a convection oven is what I understand and uh, the uh, and this particular model uh, gets very high grades all the time so it's a professional quality but it's huge I think it's actually about the same size as our microwave. Anyway, um, that's all I'm going to say about this. It's just pretty exciting uh, for me uh, to do. And um, and uh, now I'm going to take you outside. Yeah, basically what's happened is that at the beginning of September, uh, we had a horrible cold snap. And it's caused me to, um, to put my greenhouse back together again. But um, I didn't really take too much care with it because I'm not, I'm not planning on using it over the course of the winter. It's really only intended for the fall and then the spring. So um, all I did was, because I was just, I started covering the plants with this blanket, which I've been using for many, many years. I did this, I put ringlets on here, I put hooks through, and, uh, and I just have this blanket on, which makes it easy for me to um, put on and to take off. So I'm just gonna take this blanket off, and you can see, like I keep this on, now I open that up, so now it's all fulfilling with the wind. But um, for the purpose, I think it's pretty good, and it's going to be good. I'm going to keep it up, and then in the spring, I'll be able to get my plants out earlier. They can harden in there. I might even just keep this up, protect them from the harshness of the elements, because this this summer's been terrible. Like I've said many times, the um, uh, the winds, the rain, the uh, the plants were s stalled out, and it took them a good month to get back to normal. So I don't want to have that happen again. So I think I'm going to actually just grow them inside this this uh, box here and be nice and protected. Now I'm just going to take the blanket off and uh, then I'll start again. Yeah, actually I can feel that if I had a thermometer in here it would probably tell me that it's a hundred degrees. So uh, <laughs> the plants are actually thriving in here. Um, of course they were, they're a little taken aback by how cold it got and like this hot weather is just crazy. We're all talking about it because uh, I think we've got, we've hit records, record highs. Anyway, um, yeah, so I take the blanket off and it's all open here and then I can easily just kind of sit on the grass here and uh, water, the, water the plants. It's not a big deal. I cut the plants down because they were all taller than this so and it didn't have peppers on it. Um, and, I, and I do have to give a good, a good harvest. I did harvest already, uh, but I didn't do anything with the peppers. I harvested them uh, because I promised a whole bunch of people that I worked with that I would give, put little packages together so they could try different peppers. So it created quite a bit of excitement at work because, I mean, everybody loves that, right? So anyway, I've got my beautiful Fatali over here. They're red Fatali. 
actually, which is kind of rare, but um, I grew them a couple of years ago as well. Just beautiful. And, uh, and my seven pods are all ripening. Now I think uh, with, the, with this uh, greenhouse here, I'll easily be able to uh, prolong the, um, the growing season until the end of October, maybe even the beginning of November. And I don't have to fuss with covering them up at night because they're all covered up. And I've got uh, my marugas. Actually, that's a maruga over here. You could see. Don't have to get in too close. You can see that. You can see how beautiful they are. Beauty, where are you? Anyway, um, there's another one over here that's uh, it's actually going for. And then I've got some butch teas. Oh. Uh, well, I'm feeling a little bit disorganized, and it's a pretty weird uh, situation that I that I'm in. But anyway, I don't really have to talk about each individual kind. I've already talked about them a few times. Um, so, and I've got some beautiful brain strain, and I have lots. And then I've got all kinds of stuff. Here's my pimenta moringa over here, and uh, the Carolina reapers. Oh. Oh my God, what a beautiful reaper. Nice. Um, I haven't been in here for a few days anyway. And then I've got my Peruviano Iron Seal. Now this is the beautiful color that they wind up. And they are also, because they're a back tem, they're a very sweet pepper. And I think next year I'm gonna grow more um, more, more um, Peruvian Arancia plants. I only have two of them, but I, I use them all the time. Like I pick a bunch and then I have them in the fridge and I use them all the time. They're very, very straightforward, easy pepper to use. And um, that's the main one that people wanted anyway uh, to try because the way I talk about it all the time. Now, what else do I have? And this one over here is the Aji Ahua Chapau and I have a lot of peppers. They're pretty big. Now, they're a very sweet pepper. They, they ripen to this orange color right here. Actually, here's a nice one over here. Well, that one fell off. Here's a nice one right here. And they are very sweet. Not terribly hot. There's another ripe one there. And, uh, I've got hot paper lanterns in the back. And this is my Nagamorich plant. Wow. But I also have some Buchilokias over here. These are Buchilokia carbons actually. And I have I counted about uh, all together. I have um, uh, over 900 peppers, all different kinds. This is a habanero Tasmanian over here. And uh, they're very attractive little peppers. And they're all turning red and also very sweet and uh, tasty peppers. So I like that. I have some larger ones up here that um, have yet to ripen. And then I've got uh, a couple uh, Pereiras, Pereira plants over here, just loaded with beautiful peppers, all ready to pick. They're certainly ripe. Uh, there's the other one, and then, and I actually have three um, hot paper lantern plants, and uh, on the three plants, I think I probably have uh, about 120 peppers, something like that. So, like I said, almost a thousand peppers altogether. Now, um, yeah, so this is, my, uh, this is my concept here, just keeping this open and being able to just get in there. And the last couple of years, if you look at my, uh, okay, again, I, can't, I just can't, it's, these, pe these peppers are so good and, uh, and the plant's just loaded. This is the oh, Chapal, the plant is so big. It seems to never end. It goes in every direction and every branch is loaded with peppers. And there's more over here going in this direction. 
it's it's like gigantic <laughs> if only it were hotter I think it would be a pretty a much an ideal pepper from that perspective it's not very hot though so there's not much like I mean really it's a, it's almost like a normal people could just cut it up and put it into a salad so it's got a, bit, a little bit of what I might characterize as a sting not a burn at all but kind of a, a sting <laughs> when you eat it and it goes and you go oh yeah I can feel that that's basically what uh, what winds up happening and uh, yeah beautiful beautiful peppers here so neat anyway um, yeah I, I like the idea that I can uh, that I'll be able to bring my plants out uh, maybe even in May and um, as soon as the ground is uh, uh, warm enough I'll be able to plant them and uh, then they're sitting in here nice and protected from the elements now they get enough Sun because during the summer I'm not going to keep it covered up once once things happen so they do get enough Sun you can see how nice and bright it is in there uh, because there's only one layer of plastic there so the Sun actually gets through quite easily and then if I have the blanket on if it's going to be like a single digits at night it's going to be cold the blanket at least keeps the heat in so that you know it won't get too cold it'll be protected at night so um, so that's it, my butch teas, my marugas, my seven pot jonas, my brain strains, my Carolina reapers. They're all just loaded with, uh, with peppers. And uh, yeah, anyway, um, yeah, I'm thinking next year I'm, gonna, I'm going to have fewer of the, uh, of the super hots, more of the, of the uh, sweeter peppers and the, uh, the peppers that I actually end up going to all the time. Uh, the Pereira, the, uh, the Aji Benito is another uh, plant that's in here someplace. Where did you go? Where are you, Aji Benito? You're someplace in here. And um, they're, you know, just very, just really nice peppers. Nice peppers to, uh, just to eat and uh, you could cut up. And I usually use three or four peppers in a, in a dish in any case. Um, that's it. And again, thank you for watching. If you haven't subscribed to me, I really do appreciate it if you, uh, if you do. Um, I think that's all I've got to say. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Bye.